Hello, hi everybody. So, having done an introduction to CV writing and we have a small lecture number 21 next on the cover letter, but anyway this is the right time when I could show you some samples of good CVs and cover letter. So, lecture 20 here we have for you lecture 20 samples of good CVs and cover letters. I will be showing you the following 7 exhibits today in this lecture. First one page resume, second the same thing expanded two page resume. You may think of it as resume at later stages of your career. Number 3 a scannable resume that which is required when companies or organizations will be using a computer software or program to scan your resumes for keywords by which or through which they will be in fact coming down to maybe the number of CVs they require for the next stage which is the GD. Number 4 is cover letter and then we have uh, 3 more examples of a chronological resume, a functional resume and an electronic resume. This is the one page resume of a character called Herman D. Brown and he is fictitious. Herman D. Brown the fictitious character is perhaps in his second year of engineering at Chicago Technical University. So, this is a one page CV and just see how he has put the information to present himself best to his probable employers. First you see here that I have taken this uh, CV sample from Whitmore and Stevenson strategies for engineering communication. So, if you read the note what it says that first of all Herman D. Brown has put his name in all caps bold in the center top of the single white sheet of paper. Below that his complete postal address including his zip number or postal code, his email id and if you have a blog or your personal website you may put it somewhere here and this is the contact number. So, the point is even this can be done away with you can delete this because everybody knows that where there is at the rate it is an email id. So, put it very plain and simple and in the center of the page top your name in bold and black and you can read this note. The text font which was 12 point in the two page version of this resume is reduced to 11 point to allow for more information on the page. Now, this we have what is called the rule it is a bold line and it is used to separate your personal name and contact details from the rest of your important information given below that. We begin first of all with the education or the educational level and educational details of Herman D. Brown. If you see all the dates whether it is education or employment or skills all are put on the left hand side margin of the page under the main headings to make them appear very symmetrical and logically arranged. So, let us read the note here. As you understand that Herman D. Brown is a second year electrical and computer engineering student from Chicago Technical University which is located in Chicago, Illinois state. And one thing which is noteworthy about him which is credible about him that he was awarded the CTU President's Entrance and CTU Open Scholarships during the course of his study. Then we come to the employment section and while you can read this note I will just tell you in short how this candidate Herman D. Brown has highlighted the major skills he would like his employers to focus upon. It says that in summer 99 he was a junior programmer at Graham Foods Limited at Chicago, Illinois and below that there is a two line or one and a half line description a minor a very brief job description 
of what he has been doing during summer 99 in his post as junior programmer at Graham Foods Limited. Then you go back to summer 1998 and this kind of arrangement is called the reverse chronological order where the early latest comes the earliest and the oldest comes at the end. So, the most recent is at the top and the older or the older dates or the far away dates are at the bottom of his employment segment in his one page CV. Now, let us come to summer 98 and Herman D. Brown says that he was supervisor at kids and computer day camp and a brief description of what he did during that time. And then we come to an academic year which is academic year 97-98, Herman D. Brown also had uh, experience and experience of working as lab assistant at Cook Secondary School, North Chicago, Illinois and his job involved setting up labs for science courses and supervising and tutoring students. I am now and then showing you the notes so that you can examine what Stevenson and Whitmore from their famous book from the popular book strategies for Indian communication have to say as advice pieces on how to write good CVs, one page CVs. You can take it that this is the beginner level of the CV writing process. Coming then to the very first few dates when Herman D. Brown started his employment career summer 1997 and he says that he was counsellor at kids and computer day camp and his work involved providing leadership and teaching children to build electronic circuits and robots. As you notice the active verbs are used to give more power and impact to his CV. After employment we come to skills and this is an area which the employer is most concerned about because every employer you know I do not know why they want it, but every employer in fact even if you were an employer if I were an employer I think we would agree that we want the person with the maximum level of skills and since he is a student of computer science engineering here is his software skills which is in the form of a bulleted list. As you see the note says the skills section eliminates such phrases as familiar with and for example, quote open competent in unquote. This is done to save space and uses bolding to draw attention to specific skills. Note that typing is no longer listed in the other category while leadership ability has been added. We will come back to that later. So, you see that the first bullet has similar kind of items which are programs and the second bullet has all operating environments listed and the third one is all items of similar kind. So, this kind of arrangement of the matter of your skills, the details of your skills on your one page CV is that which is bound to attract the attention of the employer and very attractive CV which has been written by Herman D. Brown. Next we come to the hardware section and he says the first bulleted list what kind of systems or machines he has worked with the second and maybe because this is required for the employer or for the job position which he is interested in therefore, this is bolded. If you notice the first bulleted list is not bolded, but the second one is bolded and in the third one the last phrase networked computer systems because perhaps as I said this is one of the items which he is looking forward to work with. This is one of the areas he is like looking forward to work with with his prospective employer and he wants to highlight the fact that he has set up and maintained networked computer systems. And then because this is a one page CV and there was a need to compact or contract or pack all the information in one page only therefore, he has subsumed the matter for communication skills, leadership ability and fluent friends. 
you just can't write communication skills you have to precede it by this adjective excellent because you want to show that you are good in communication skills. Then of course, we come to the activities and interest section and here for uh, change I would like to suggest over and above what Stevenson and Whitmore have to comment on this one page CV from the book strategies for engineering communication. I would like to comment that this section breaks the headings for these section breaks could have been in mixed case as well. It is not necessary that it has to be in all caps. Remember where that uh, when something is in all caps a reader will read it word by word when it is mixed case the reader will read it in a paragraph or in a sentence form. So, coming to the last section of his uh, activities and interests the last segment in his one page CV he lists what he has achieved in the areas of in the sub areas of electronics design debate photography and big brothers sports and the last is references references and he writes there available upon request. This is written because it is first of all a one page CV and second the fact that if he is called for the next stage of shortlisting at that time the company or the organization or the recruitment forum will approach him and ask for his list of references which includes professional referees. It of course, includes professors and those he had worked with professors who have taught him and his previous employers or his first time employers or his internship guide, but the point is that all these details will be provided if the company or the organization or the recruiter requests him to send this. So, that a cross check may be made on his CV and working portfolio. So, that is the end uh, maybe you could uh, you could need uh, you could in fact read this note as well activities and interests have been combined to save space. Note that the only information missing from the shorter resume is the junior achievement program and the math enrichment program. If Herman had a strong interest in entrepreneurship he could have added the heading entrepreneurship to the activities and interests section and added a one line description of his activities while in the junior achievement program. The math program is too dated to be worth including in fact this item should also be omitted from the two paged version a reminder that you should periodically review your resume to eliminate dated material as well as to add new items. So, as you understand it is a question of length breadth as well as time you must be able to update your CV and things which are too old because now you are looking for a bigger jump in your career. So, small things you know very minor things which you did long 20 years ago may be back in your career are not important and therefore, you may delete them in your updated CV. Now, let us come to the two page resume of Herman D. Brown. So, Stevenson and Whitmore in the book strategies for engineering communication say that uh, the following fictitious resume represent an engineering student with two years of engineering education appropriately. The various sections in the resume are organized chronologically and highlight the skills an employer might be looking for in a student. Stevenson and Whitmore present a two page and single page version for comparison and to allow you to discuss formatting features of the two page resumes. In this particular scenario the one page version is likely more appropriate an individual with more expertise which more experience could require a second page or a two page resume. We read further someone with more employment experience or who is seeking a higher level position might also organize a resume differently and we will have more samples of uh, such CVs to show you also in the video lectures in run up to this lecture you have seen that uh, there have been short video clips where this similar advice has been given. For example, let us continue. For example, the note says such an individual might include a statement of career goals or experience at the beginning of her resume following followed by her employment history education and awards would accordingly be listed later in the resume. So, the same thing here you have uh, on the top the name of the candidate in the centered 
top margin of the page in bold and black, the complete postal address and this entire area, this entire top segment of the personal contact details are centrally aligned. Next we have told you that this is called the rule, the rule or it is a bold line which separates your personal details from the rest of the important information to follow. Remember this is a two page CV and therefore, the matter is now more detailed. You can now and then go back to the one page CV of this same candidate and therefore, you can compare and contrast. Coming to the education section, this section headings are set in bold sans serif font in order to distinguish them from the rest of the resume. In lengthy resumes, the headings are sometimes numbered as in technical reports, but that is just an advice. It is up to you to choose the format which chooses, which uh, in fact is able to best fulfill your needs for the situation or the requirement. So, since this is a two page CV, he includes additional material for example, for the present scenario, the present moment that is when he is a student of second year at Chicago Technical University in electrical and computer engineering department September 99 to present. He has only to say that he is in second year, but uh, here September 98 to April 99 he says that it is a one year college transfer program. You can read this note in the meantime and then if you move further June 1998 he was credited with having graduated with honors which he mentions in the second line of that section. Now, since we have the award section there is more detail on the awards he got in 98 and 1999. The note, the note which we have for you says that in this example the awards are presented in a separate section in order to draw attention to them. This strategy is particularly useful if the person has many awards or some that are especially prestigious. An applicant with only one or two awards could choose to list them as part of the relevant entry in the education section itself. So, keep this note in mind as we move further to the employment section of Herman D. Brown's two page CV. So, employment in fact started uh, quite early in 97, 98 when he was in the school year and you see compared to the one page CV here the description of what he did during that tenure is in more detail. So, also for summer 98 which is here and you can read this note which is quite detailed. If we move to the latest segment where he is presently now let us say the fictitious character Herman D. Brown in summer 99 he was junior programmer at Graham Foods Limited Illinois Chicago and a great uh, a great uh, detailed seg segment follows of what he did during that time that is summer of 1999. We come to page 2. So, you see at the top here top right hand corner Herman D. Brown has listed his name in short h dot brown comma page 2. He does not write page 2, he writes h dot brown comma no full stop. And this because uh, in case you have uh, stapled a two page CV and there are always chances that the second page might fall off or be torn off amidst a uh, big pile of papers which is regularly being handled by many people who are involved in the recruitment cell of the organization of the company. And therefore, to prevent any mishap or to prevent the separation of the first and the second page of a CV, Herman D. Brown has put a small in fact, uh, pointer to the fact that this is the second page of his CV and his name is H, Brown in short. We come to the earliest segment of his employment career and that is summer 97 
where he again describes in more detail than that in a one page CV what he did as counselor in kids and computer day camp at. We come next to the skills section while you have read the note in more detail now compared to the one page CV. He writes such terms as competent in and familiar with and experienced with. You will please recall and remember that in the one page CV this was not the case. In the one page CV software had only three bulleted entries the first listing these, the second listing these and the third listing these and not even and there was only a comma between all these items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the items were separated by comma and all were listed under the third bullet. Coming next to hardware again the same thing and I think it would be proper to read the note provided by the authors of the CV from the book strategies for engineering communication by Stevenson and Whitmore. In this resume the various skills are presented in a bulleted list of related items for example, under the software subheading the first bullet introduces a list of programming languages, the second bullet introduces a list of operating systems and the third bullet introduces a list of applications. Also note that the skills section could have been located earlier in the resume is not it. So, you can think about this point it is very well put and uh, something which you would agree with sensibly speaking. It says someone with more impressive skills than work experience could locate this section following education and awards. So, the point is that the more you move forward in your career your education or your early requirements for entering the workplace take a back seat and your latest experience your uh, currently what you are involved with your latest addition to your skill set or workplace repertoire of skills you have acquired over the years is more important and that should come in the upper part or in the top part of your CV. So, let us move further and he goes on to his other uh, skills which include excellent communication and teaching skills in the one page CV remember that teaching skills was not mentioned. We move further and come to know that he also knows photography and basic techniques of the darkroom procedures. He is fluent in Spanish in the one page CV he wrote fluent Spanish, but here two page CV and you can be liberal with words fluent in Spanish and we had not this in the one page CV his typing speed is 60 words per minute. Now, this is one segment volunteer and extracurricular activities which companies and recruiters organizations and uh, people who matter in the organization are most interested in because it gives a complete rounded personality structure to the candidate. Everybody can be doing a B.Tech or an M.Tech or a second year in electrical and communica communication engineering I mean many can be doing, but what sets you apart from each other is not only your CGPA or your grades, but uh, what are the other aspects of your personality and what do you do in your free time, what are you interested in other than studies and working. So, moving to the earliest time between 92 to 95 which is junior achievement program, 93 CTU math enrichment program. 94 to present big brothers recreation assistant and 95-96 he was in metro Chicago debate competitions and president of photography club and latest at present maybe 2 years ago 1999 he was fundraiser in big brothers recreation fund. So, I hope you have read the note by this time, but anyway the soft copy is with you and you can read it at length. Then we come to interest this is again to stress upon the point that the company is looking for those who are complete personalities the company or the organizers want somebody who can step in on various other equation uh, occasions as required by the organization. Suppose you are working in a place and you are called by the boss that let us have a let us have a cultural night or a farewell party and if you say that 
you are uh, good in debating, why not you be called to deliver the farewell speech or the thanksgiving speech. So, we have electronics, debate, drawing and design and sports mentioned as his interests. The same thing as the one page CV, references will be available upon request. We come now to the first of the second set of uh, CVs I wanted to show you and that is the chronological resume. Now, this resume belongs to Daily, Daisy Bristow, Daisy Bristow and this is differently arranged. You see that you might choose to have your personal details in top center or you might have it like this in the left hand alignment top corner. Complete postal address with the house number, telephone number, landline of the residence or cell, voicemail and the email. And this is slightly different in this CV there is no bulleted list, but you can very well understand that if the summary of the CV had been put in bulleted list format, it would always look better. Then you come to experience segment of the CV, chronological CV and this is from April 2002 to present what he has been doing, what she has been doing is temporary assignments at Pittsburgh. From 1999 to February 2002, Pullman ear and nose in this company, she was executive assistant to Dr. Graydon Pullman and this is now different. Here you see a bulleted list is provided of what work she did during the period April 1999 to February 2002. Of course, you very well understand that this is called a chronological CV because it is arranged chronologically. And he worked as computer consultants limited at this company as an office manager August 97 to May 99, page 2 and this is different from Herman Brown's page 2. On the left hand corner you have the candidate's name and on the right hand corner top maybe in the header segment page 2. Education and training is the next segment where again you do not have the bulleted list and so long list that is separated by commas and then achievements which are again not given in bulleted format and that is all. And then we move on to the functional resume. We have a functional resume of Noah Trenton. And similar to the CV I showed you of Herman D. Brown, name central, top, central justified, center justified with the complete postal address including house, telephone number and voicemail. The career objective is given right at the top and the student fictitious character describes what he is and what he can do. A highly motivated college graduate with a passion for art and history seeks an administrative position in which I can complement the existing environment while developing new avenues for growth. So, in a functional resume, the career objective occupies center stage and top position of importance because the functionality, the function the work which the candidate is interested in is to be found a match with the prospective organization where he or she will be working. So, Noah Trenton describes the objective of her career as somebody despite having or with having a passion for art and history is able to do any kind of administrative job because he or she would be able to complement and fit in at new workplaces at the same time developing upon the new avenues for her growth. The skills section is bulleted for better readability and the education segment is arranged in slightly different manner. First the degree and the 
depth of the degree is described which I have selected for you. The degree was conferred in May 2004 from Oklahoma State University at Oklahoma and after Master of Arts there is Bachelor of Arts described further. Work experience of the candidate is from August 2002 to August 2004 and she says in more details that what has been going on during 2002 to 2004 with her. So, the first the earliest is supporters of art program assistant this is the internship period of the candidate and what the candidate did during the internship period is in a bulleted list here. And then the service as an internship once again one more internship at institute for art conservation assistant to collectors collections manager and presently as of now this needs to be bolded June 1998 to present he she is employed in artwork artwork decent where the work involves conducting bi monthly artwork for traveling exhibits. Now, the electronic resume is uh, as we said in the lecture is a resume which is meant to be electronically assessed, summarized and shortlisted. So, this is a resume which will be read with computer programs or applications which are fitted with OCR optical character recognition software. Now, the computer or the machines will read multiple CVs of this type which has been requested in this electronic format by the recruiter or the organization because they expect may be a multitude of applications and they need to be very precise exact and may be short on time also to shortlist the best CVs they would require for the next phase of the recruitment. So, in this kind of CV the candidate writes his or her name on top and it is very brief because the computer is a machine it is not a man or a person with a human touch who will be looking at this. So, the machine will read the name of the candidate if it is in all caps and thus the name like this. And what has been requested by the organization is details on school, home and email and that has been suitably filled up by the candidate. Now, in a scannable or an electronic resume we use keywords, we use keywords because they are form of the job description which has been floated by the company along with the job advertisement or the job recruitment advertisement. Now, the keywords are being searched by the machine and therefore, this is the place where you can put the maximum of your skills in one column or in one box in one segment. So, the machine will be having a data of so many keywords by which it has to shortlist the applicant applicants or the applications based on the CV and therefore, you see this has been quite a long list of the keywords the candidate says he or she processes expertise in. After that is objective and the candidate says that he is or she is looking forward to a position that will allow him or her to use and develop signature arts business and as well as communication skills. Compared to the chronological resume or the functional resume you see how you have the education then you have the work experience and then you have on page 2 activities now there is no page 2 written here an activity segment of the candidate mentioned in this order but uh, it's very plain and simple there is no there are no adjectives and nouns but most of all there are verbs action words because this is the kind of diction this is the kind of vocabulary or language which the machine has been keyed in in order to shortlist the candidate so, here is the cover letter of Herman D. Brown and you can read the note at ease at your own leisure later on. Here on the top right hand corner you have the 
address separated by a space and after a space there is the date line. So, the address is top right hand corner and left justified space single space line after that you have this is called the date line and follow one format and stick to it throughout. Do not keep on changing the format of how you write the date. Either you may write 2 October 1999 or write October 2 1999 or whatever you choose and stick to it. Here there is no 2 because it is understood that this is the address of the addressee and the person is mentioned by his or her specific name Joanna Green who is the director of personnel at a company called Supersoft Systems and the address of the company is given. The candidate begins with a salutation after a one space gap, one line space gap dear Miss Green and you notice here that unlike what we have been taught to observe or taught the way to write after the salutation we do not put a comma please note it very carefully we put a semicolon uh, sorry we put a colon because a colon says the rest of the important matter is to follow now. And the first paragraph of the cover letter gives a detailed description of the background or the context under which the candidate has been interested to apply for the job under advertisement. The second paragraph gives an example of it is an example of what the candidate had been doing at his important workplace for her it is important this experience at Graham Foods. Then we have the third paragraph and it details the way in which the candidate is able to match his or her expertise with that required by the organization. The candidate says as you mentioned part of that job will require that I integrate the new network with NT 4.0 and Microsoft Office 2000. I feel these are some verbs you must use I feel because it, it smacks of confidence. It is in fact reflective of the amount of enthusiasm you have for the job and the candidate says I feel my considerable experience with that operating environment, my familiarity with the range of Microsoft products and my prior training with networks provide me with the skills needed to successfully complete the task and therefore, the point is made. The candidate is now able to speak about his other skills or his additional advantages to be in the workplace and in the concluding or closing paragraph of the cover letter the candidate gives uh, uh, indication an indication that he or she has attached the CV where further details can be obtained and his contact address is once again given. And in a plain and simple signing off the candidate simply writes sincerely there is no need to write yours sincerely and yours faithfully Sim write, simply write sincerely there is no need to write faithfully because your faith has not yet been tested simply write sincerely because you are sincere in your attempts to get a job sincerely and this is the signature and this is the full name of the candidate in mixed case enclosure resume is mentioned in the bottom left hand corner. I think having seen these many good examples of uh, CV, CVs and the cover letter we would be now equipped to move further. Thank you and God bless you always.